Hello everyone, thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Azadeh Ahadian. In today's webinar, we talk about the scan process, data processing workflow, supported file types, supported content, supported SaaS application, supported applications with selective scanning and their behaviors. After we add or onboard a cloud app, we need to initiate the scan. We call it the discovery process. The discovery process is a backward scan. It scans all the assets in the cloud app. SaaS Security API scans all assets in a cloud app and discovers policy violations. It matches the asset against enabled default policy rules and identifies incidents. As soon as the scan process identifies a violation, it populates the information about it in the SAS security dashboard. So you can start assessing incident while the scan is in process. The scan time depends on the number of assets on the cloud app. After the initial backward scan is completed, SAS security API continues scanning the asset periodically. It searches for root entities such as users, channels, shared drive, and other supported types. A scan frequency depends on different factors. One of the factors is the app API rate limit, which we need to consider to avoid affecting the application performance. The scan runs almost every five minutes if it hasn't reached the API rate limit. First of all, we know that there are different types of entities in different cloud apps. So when we scan applications, we scan different things. There are two different scan processes, forward scan and backward scan. Both start automatically and cannot be started manually. We mentioned that the initial discovery process is a backward scan. Forward scan scans all new assets after the detection point. The backward scan is not supported for all applications. For example, we do not support backward scan for Bitbucket, Slack Pro and Business, Zoom, Jira Cloud, or Confluence Cloud. Of course, the forward scan is supported for all applications. Typically, forward scan includes new assets, deleted assets, and content updates on assets. But here again, there are some exceptions. For example, we don't have a scan support for deleted files for some applications. The complete details for each application are documented. We will refer to it later. SaaS security uses API to connect to your app and discover and scan the assets. It is a deep content inspection almost in real time. After the scan is done, it removes the data and only keeps metadata. The content of each asset is kept in memory only when SAS security scans the asset. We keep files up to 48 hours, user activities 90 days, Metadata infinity. Now, let's take a look at the flow. First, it downloads the content and extracts the text. Then it sends it to the data processing module where it performs pattern matching, machine learning analysis, wildfire analysis, and checking exposure level. After these steps are completed, it saves the metadata and deletes the data. The next and final step is to display the findings and provides reporting options. We can create reports from the report section of the SAS security, where we have several reports designed for different purposes. Or we can use SAS security dashboards to create custom reports. SAS security dashboards have filtering options that you can narrow down the results and create 
reports of the information and then download them. The result of the scan analysis is to identify vulnerabilities such as sensitive content, external exposures, risky user behaviors, and external collaborators who are not trusted and not defined under trusted users and domains. If you recall, we had talked about the importance of creating an internal domain list and list of trusted users before adding a cloud app to SaaS security API in one of our previous presentations. Some notes on wildfire analysis. There are two types of wildfire analysis, static and dynamic. A static analysis of wildfire displays files that show characteristics of known malware. The dynamic analysis focuses on the hosts and network activities and reports if there are harmful activities. There are more than 100 file types that SAS Security API can scan. We have a table in the online doc that shows a list of all supported, more commonly used file type categories. We mentioned that SAS Security supports scanning different entities in different apps. This table shows the detail of content support for each app. Also, more detail on scan support for each app. As mentioned before, backward scanning is not supported for all applications. Selective scanning is the ability to include or exclude Active Directory groups from the scan process. Therefore, the Cloud app must have the support to integrate with Active Directory and enforce the file ownership. Selective scanning is not supported on the Cloud apps with the capability to share files with multiple users. Currently, we only support Box and Microsoft Office OneDrive. This is a new feature in the beta stage, and we strongly encourage you to talk to your SaaS security support team before enabling this feature. SaaS security scan for organizational unit provides a similar result for Google Drive. Selective scanning is not enabled by default. You should decide if you want this feature before adding your cloud app. Suppose you enable this feature after your cloud app is added. In that case, you must delete the cloud app instance, then reconnect the cloud app to SaaS Security API and initiate a new scan to rediscover all assets and events for all users. In that case, all assets and events will be deleted and incidents reported for users will be closed and no longer included in the selected groups. There are common behaviors when using selective scanning. If we remove a user from a group in the Active Directory or remove a group from selective scanning, SAS Security API removes asset or user activities and closes any related incidents. This might take up to seven days. If we add a user to a group in the directory service or add a group to selective scanning, SAS Security API records new user activities for new users. Now, we will have our question and answer session. Thank you everyone for attending.